Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy a battle deck? Battle decks are not part of any official Magic the Gathering format such as Standard, but instead are designed with balanced, constructed gameplay in mind. Providing players with the ability to select from any of a wide variety of decks that might interest them, and then be able to sit down to play fun, engaging, casual games of Magic the Gathering. Touted as ideal for casual, new, and returning players, and priced only at $11.99 each, are these decks worth buying, or are they just another assortment of cards whose final price tag and result doesn't add up? Let's take a look. But first, battle decks are designed by the team at Card Kingdom, and my channel is sponsored by Card Kingdom. As always, while Card Kingdom's support of the channel is appreciated, this review, like all of my reviews, will still strive to be critical and honest as any other. I've actually been sponsored by Card Kingdom for about seven years now, and in that time, the terms and rate of my sponsorship has never once changed. We actually have a very simple handshake agreement that allows me to say as little or as much as I want, review and even praise products from competitors of Card Kingdom, which I have done, and is basically little more than a casual cooperation between myself and them because, well, we like each other. I mean, I think it's pretty cool that Card Kingdom recently not only welcomed its workers' rights to form a union, but then went the extra step of actually sitting down at the table and reaching an agreement. They also do lots of awesome charity work and community building that makes me proud to be associated with them. But my sponsorship with Card Kingdom does not require me to make this video, they don't even get an advanced screening of it, and I don't receive any additional bonus for something like battle deck sales. I just really wanted to update my review. I did one about seven or eight years ago, so I guess it's time for an update. And nonetheless, it's always important to disclose these relationships, however casual they may be. That being said, when shopping for battle decks or any Magic the Gathering cards or accessories, you can always go to www.cardkingdom.com forward slash TCC as it will show Card Kingdom that you came from me and show that value that me and my community can have for them. But of course, that choice is yours. And now, let's take a look at battle decks by beginning with what are battle decks? Battle decks are 60 card decks of mostly commons and uncommons that are built around a theme or mechanic. Often following draft archetypes from various sets, battle decks are meant to be balanced against one another, allowing you to play any two battle decks and generally have equal power levels and a well-balanced game. While not exclusively limited to draft archetypes, most battle decks look to build a constructed experience experience of a key mechanic from their respective sets. For example, the Oil Baron's deck is built around using oil counters, while the new Arcane Army deck is built using red-blue Amass cards, and thus playing that deck is similar to drafting an Amass deck where you're drafting Lord of the Rings, only here you get a 60-card constructed version and the ability to play against battle decks that are designed from other sets, as opposed to just having a draft matchup. Some battle decks are constructed with a cohesive theme instead of a draft archetype, such as the two-faced deck's large number of double-faced cards. Battle decks will take these archetypes and themes and create a 60-card deck that utilizes it. Sometimes they even include older cards which serve that deck's needs or theme. The premise of battle decks is to provide a streamlined and, most of all, balanced gameplay experience. As such, rarity is not considered when building them. The deck designers are only looking at what specific cards do for the deck, and are not constrained to have a specific number of commons or rares. In looking through all of these decks, I noticed that the majority were commons and uncommons, though some decks did have multiple rares and even mythics, but overwhelmingly, the battle decks that I sampled were just commons and uncommons. Battle deck construction construction does vary based upon Card Kingdom's availability, meaning that many cards that do similar or functionally identical things will be tagged as potential inclusions, and then based on supply there will be some variation within battle decks of the same name. As a result, there is no set deck lists for battle decks. I'll talk about financial analysis in just a moment, but I think it's really important to know this about the product. 
you are buying a battle deck that is going to be different from other battle decks based on the supply of cards that Card Kingdom has on hand. They are trying to match similar cards together into the deck. There is a construction and a cohesive theme, but no two are going to be alike. And the majority, as I said, that I opened up are pretty much just commons and uncommons. But I do like to think of battle decks as you not buying decks for cool rares or mythics, instead you're buying them for the theme and the experience of getting to play that theme. But regardless of that, I do like battle decks. And the thing I like about them is, is it's what I play with my family. I'm able to sit down with my wife and my kid and play games of Magic the Gathering with them. This is not something we can easily do even with Commander Precons, which are overly complex and create types of games that are not really applicable to me just jamming a few games after dinner with my family. But these, these are a lot of fun. We take them out, I don't even have to worry about sleeves, yeah, 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 I know, and we shuffle up and we play. They've got a singular archetype or theme that they're built around, so my young kid can understand them, isn't gonna get Get overly confused, games aren't getting bogged down, people, friends that come over that used to play that I want to get a game with, I take these out and that's what I use them for. I didn't buy them for the financial value, I didn't buy them for the rares and mythics. I bought them as an easy, effective, and fun way to play magic. In a lot of ways I feel like when I'm playing with a battle deck, it's a bit of a throwback to the type of magic I played when I first started playing Magic, back before there even was something called Commander or even Standard, and we were just jamming games on the playground. Battle decks feel a lot like that. You went through your collection, you picked out cards with a similar theme and put them together. Th that's a battle deck. And for me, that's an experience that had been very hard to capture. And it wasn't until my son expressed an interest in Magic the Gathering, and I struggled to find a way to get him into Magic the Gathering at such a young age that I pulled out my old battle decks, started playing with them, went down to Mox Boarding House, picked up some more of the new ones, and thought, hey, maybe it's time to update this review. But what did I find when I did update this review in regards to financial analysis? Financial worth. Let me be clear, battle decks do not contain any cards of significant value. A great majority of the cards in battle decks are what we might refer to as draft chaff. Cards that would see play in limited, but never really secure a place in constructed formats, and are relegated instead to bulk bins. That's not to say that there aren't a lot of great cards in these battle decks. I see many commons and uncommons, and even the occasional rare, that is what I would call a name recognition card. There's no chase rare or mythics, or play sets of $4 uncommons. After all, they are only $11.99 each. While it varies, I looked at a wide sample of battle decks and found that it should cost you about $7 to $9 were you to try and buy all the singles yourself. But that actually is one of the advantages of battle decks. You don't have to construct them yourselves. They have been designed for you, and they are very balanced against one another. That's another difficult thing to do. And thus, the main selling point of battle decks beyond the gameplay itself is largely that they are saving you the trouble of designing your own $12 deck and maintain a power level balance against any other decks you might make yourself. I like the convenience of getting these, I like the construction of getting these, but there's no real financial value in getting these. But that's not the product's thesis, it's about gameplay. The biggest criticism that I have heard and likely will continue to hear about battle decks is, ah, these are just piles of bulk cards. And my feelings here are that, yes, these are bulk cards, but it isn't just a pile. To claim these decks are something that has not been meticulously constructed is a very false statement. These cards are largely what we would call draft chaff, yes, but that doesn't mean the deck hasn't been carefully and intently constructed to create a cohesive gameplay experience, and again, as we've seen, it's not entirely draft chaff. There are really good name cards in here. Just because a magic card doesn't see competitive play doesn't mean it isn't still a magic card. The majority of magic cards end up in bulk bins, but they were designed to be played with and enjoyed, largely in draft, and in battle decks, those very cards have been curated into balanced 60-card decks that, while they're not high-level competitive magic, are still 
magic. And by the way, there is a huge difference between my evaluating a product made by Wizards of the Coast, which is being sold for $45 and up, in a situation where they can print any card that they want and put it into that deck, versus here, where a card store is going through their supply and constructing decks based on that supply and offering it instead for $11.99 and focusing that design on balance. Battle decks, for all their financial value faults, are still only $11.99 each. And for that $11.99, offer an easy to understand, clear Magic the Gathering experience that may not be of interest to enfranchised players, but serves a large market of people looking for casual, fun games of simpler Magic the Gathering. If nothing else, Battle Decks let me do something no other Magic product existing today lets me do. Sit down with my family and just jam a casual game of Magic. And that, to me, is worth $11.99. Final conclusion. Battle Decks are not worth it for any established Magic the Gathering players who already play and enjoy formats such as Standard, Pioneer, and Modern. These decks will not contain cards played in these formats, nor will they have the financial value you would expect from products such as Challenger decks or other official pre-constructed decks for such formats. But battle decks are worth it to casual players, and especially worth it to players looking to get games with or provide decks for younger Magic the Gathering players. Battle decks may not offer financial worth, but they offer a balanced gameplay experience. In some ways, an older, more classic Magic the Gathering experience. And for those players, they are indeed worth it. And the grade is and remains a B plus. If you are looking to pick up a battle deck, you can go to www.cardkingdom.com forward slash TCC and see a giant selection of them. I also have listed there low price and good value commander decks, my favorite accessories and other cool pickups that you might be interested in. So go ahead and and check it out. And I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out greatly just by watching another video. Hey, did you catch the new episode of Shuffle Up and Play where we played the Commander variant, Monarch in the Middle? You can check out that video here or linked in this video's description.